you can use your existing um, anatomical landmarks to identify the appropriate intercostal or the paravertebral space so your can you shrug your shoulders the shoulder tip corresponds to say t7 and your root of the spine corresponds to t4 so most often the paravertebral block is done for say thoracic surgery so you choose a spot somewhere in between um, say if your chest uh, you want a block from say t t2 to t6 so you need to go for somewhere like t3 t4 t4 t5 so you can do a single injection or you can do multiple injections one at the say t2 level uh, and then another at say t4 t5 level to achieve a good spread along the paravertebral cuttle so most often we do a single injection blocks uh, so we choose uh, space about t4 t5 so you can count the intercostal uh, spaces the way to do paravertebral ultrasound very easily is to start from the intercostal spaces and work your way closer to the uh, midline so your first uh, uh, intercostal space basically start counting from the first rib So first ribs, second, then you have the third rib, and then the fourth rib. Uh, so you choose the third, the fourth intercostal. The fifth intercostal space, and then you work your probe. towards the midline uh, and the intercostal uh, space is very very easily seen with an ultrasound probe using a linear probe so you can see the rib as a curved white line with an acoustic shadow and in between the two ribs you can see the intercostal space with the intercostal muscles sometimes you can see the pulsation of the intercostal vessels and then beneath the intercostal muscles you straight away hit the parietal pleura and the parietal pleura is quite obviously seen as, as shown on that image so if you go closer to the transverse process of the midline, uh, the shape of the rib changes from being a semi semispherical thing to somewhat like a hump. At that point, the image quality deteriorates, so you go back to the same uh, when you have a better quality of image. And then you can either do in in the uh, you probe on the longitudinal plane uh, and then do an in-plane technique. Obviously, the transverse process is not going to be best visualized, and the membranes are not best visualized in this position. So we often end up kind of rotating the probe at that level. So I just wanted to check whether I'm rotating the right way. So when you rotate at that level, you will see a transverse view of it. So what you're seeing on that uh, screen, uh, the left hand side, you have a bony sill out of the transverse process. That's where the transverse process ends. And then the rib start so if i move my probe up you will see the transverse process ends and then the ribs continue so you see a complete blackout beneath that so whereas if you move your probe slightly down you will start to see the shadow of the pleura and, and then the rib disappears but you can still see the shadow of the transverse process
axis on the left hand side. So if you slightly angulate the probe so that into an oblique position, you can start seeing the intercostal. So you insert your needle from the side. Um, you can do this uh, in sitting position uh, or you can do in the lateral position. Um, awake uh, often sometimes can be painful if you're using a wide bore needle. But if you're using a single injection uh, technique then with a 22 gauge needle it's not as painful as a 2 he needle is. So you can do them awake some, but preferably it's best done under a sleep uh, anesthesia. So you insert your needle, so, so you see my finger pushing through. inject a small volume of local anesthetic to see whether it is in the correct space so if you after aspiration obviously and if you are in the correct space you will see that the, the space opens up where the, the pleura gets pushed away but if you are within the muscles then you will see a mus, mus, intramuscular injection within the in, in, uh, you would need a volume about 20 mils. You can use uh, more than that if you want a much higher spread. Uh, usually about quarter of a cent um, The it's it may be useful uh, to put some color Doppler to see if there's any vascularity. And if you can't see this picture uh, with a linear probe, you can use a curvy linear probe. And then once you have injected, or once you are in the process of injecting, you can turn the probe uh, along uh, the longitudinal plane to see whether your spread is happening to the other uh, spaces uh, by seeing the distance between the pleura and the uh, intercostal membrane. So you create a pocket between the, the muscles and the pleura uh, so that it spreads along the gutter. And you can reverse but get back get your probe back to where your position is uh, and you just can inject the full volume of local anesthetic if you do it in awake patients you will notice a lot of pressure because of the pleura getting pushed away uh, but even if you have by chance if you puncture the pleura as long as your system is intact that is it's not open to the air then there is very little chance that you will have a pneumothorax as long as you have used a completely closed system until you finish your injection and pull your needle out. Um, the other things to note are uh, you can you can do multiple level injections as well. Uh, and one of the important tips is that especially with this particular technique we find the use of echogenic needle is a key because the needle visualization is very important because you need to see the tip very clearly uh, just piercing through the membrane 
and uh, this is a technique where you're operating very close to the pleura and you have to be very very cautious it's definitely not a beginner's block thank you very much okay.